Well, thank you guys so much for speaking with me today. What a great movie. Oh, oh we're so glad you gosh. love it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me for both of you, how did you get to be a part of this film? So we are Lunch Hour Productions and Nina actually knew the one of the writers, Christina Cotanzaro. And as we were getting started with our production company and reviewing scripts and deciding what was going to be our first project, Christina came to Nina and... Well, let's let's roll back a little bit further. I mean, Linda and I met at HBO in the 80s and always always thought we'd love to do something together outside of HBO. And uh, and come the 2000s, we had the opportunity to do that. And our And our production company literally started during the lunch hour at the corner table of a Triumph restaurant in the Iroquois Hotel, a block from my office and a few blocks from Linda's. So, and there we decided, we started to look for properties that we would be interested in, in developing. And uh, one, of the, one of the properties we were interested in developing, I, I was looking for a writer and somebody recommended Christina Canzaro because my property was about wine and she had just done a documentary about wine. Well, Christina worked at HBO, I knew her as an intern. Long story short, she gave me a writing sample, which turned out to be Eternal Buzz, which was the recent, the former name of, of Tripped Up. Uh, and then we met her writing. I let get it, gave it to Linda, and Linda thought it was just delightful. So you met the writing partner, and this, I think, was in 2015. So it's been in development a very long time. And Carrie Shaw is the Carrie Shaw writing is, is the writing partner. And, and Christina and Carrie grew up together, so they know longtime friendship. And I think a lot of the material that they used to develop the story and to create the characters was from their own experience. Uh, and that's, it's, as I said, it came to us because we loved it and, and offered to collaborate with them. And they let us, do, they let us develop it. And uh, we also brought in Shruti Gangali, who was uh, my assistant in 2015 for two weeks. Before she went to Tisch and got dual degrees in 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 uh, business and directing, so it's a it's a kind of an HBO alumni project. <laughs> well, what I also love is it's been in as you you ladies said in production since 2015. What made you guys want to hold on to it? Because there have been times where production companies have just been like, "Too long, throw it off the table. We're moving on to something else." What made you guys want to hold on to this one? We felt people needed to laugh. Uh, we we also loved the girlfriend fac facet of it. We felt that was an important story to tell. Friendship. Friendship. We really wanted it to be around women, friendship, diversity, inclusion, how we can bring people together based on who they are. Uh, and we worked closely with the writers over all of that time to really continue to mold and shape it and turn it into the wonderful story it is now. Uh, we felt that uh, it, it's time, it, the time was right. So we stayed with it. Uh, we sent, you know, we worked with a great casting director, Pat McCorkle, to really find the perfect fit for each character and uh, to find the right team too, you know, that not only, because it is an ensemble, if you will, but it's, it's all female led. And even our, the men that we did hire, they were important too. You know, they really had to fit into the, the appropriate vibe of, of what the women represented. Well, one of the reasons that we stuck with it so long is that it's comedy that's not mean. And I, and I, and I think that's, there's so little of that. It was not deprecating. It doesn't have, it doesn't have, you know, bodily function jokes, really. It's just, it's just comedy that comes out of the mistakes people make in life. And, and we love that about the story. It made us, it made us laugh with, recognition because we've all done some silly things in our lives especially when we were younger now we don't make mistakes of course not. But, um. <laughs> but also the comedy comes from the craziness of the journey you know it's a lot of zaniness along the road so but yeah the fact that it wasn't mean that it was just a wonderful friendship comedy you don't see a lot of those particularly for women no. uh, and that was important to us we really as a production company we feel very strongly that we want to bring really good stories to the screen uh, and about whether it's about women or underrepresented voices or just really fabulous characters that you want to spend time with. Yeah, that's that's always my thing. I, I, I have limited appreciation for movies that I don't really want to spend time with any of the characters in it. And there are just unfortunately a lot of those around. 
we love these women. We've been we've been we've been with these characters for years since, since the movie went into production. We've been living with these characters, and and the actors just brought so much of, of their own perspectives to to the characters to make them richer and more connected, which I think you really feel on screen. So I yeah, no. absolutely love the fact that it wasn't mean. Um, Cause a lot of times going into gal pal road trips, they can get really, really nasty at each other and, or really raunchy comedy, which takes me for in my own realm, like my own opinion takes me completely out of the story. I can't find a way to relate to it. I'm just like, okay, you know, here we go with another one. And so going into this one, I was like, please don't let this just be another another typical gal pal and I laughed my way through it I had the biggest smile on my face when I finished watching it because it is so lighthearted, and the characters that were created in it from the four female leads all the way down to the secondary characters you couldn't take a single one out of the story because it would have impacted it so much so kudos to you guys for holding on to the story for so long and bringing it to life. So my next question for both of you is of our four female leads, who do you relate the most to? That's one I've never been asked. Yeah, that's, I, I know there's a little, there's a little bit of um, Lizzie and Taylor are, are the ones that I relate to most. I, I, Taylor's especially because she's um, an observer and she's also a truth teller. So she doesn't say a lot, but She's she's the one to to call everybody else when she sees that that there's bullshit going on. So mm -hmm. Lizzie is very you know very driven. So reminds me of Linda, <laughs> uh, who will this Linda will this production to the screen. Um, but I, so there's a little of each of them. Now Mary's pretty driven too, and she's but her life is too perfect. Mine's messier, you know. So I didn't relate as much to that. And you know, and Kai's just a happy go lucky good time person and so less less I mean there's a little bit of all of them I think in in, in us but I related most to to Lizzie and Taylor yeah, and I probably relate more to Lizzie and Kai because <laughs> I've got that lighthearted everything's I've got that kumbaya everything's always going to be all right yes we're always going to get along yes we're going to figure out the way that makes everybody happy but I am determined I did will this into being in fact they used to tease me all the time but um but I'm thrilled that we're here. <laughs> you know, we got, got the distribution deals, got the money, got the talent, and we made it happen. Yep. Did you guys always want it to be a female-led creative team when you guys were starting the process of this? Was that always from the get-go? This is where um, we're going to lean towards? Well, it kind of just made sense given what the yeah. story was. And, you know, and we're, we're two women and the writers were two women. And I mean, it, it just kind of fell into place. And Shruti actually had been working on a turning 30 script herself she's a script writer as well as a producer of independent films and now a director uh and when she read the script she just really wanted to be included and thought she really really felt connected to the story and the women in it so uh it just it fell into place but we but it wasn't somewhat intentional also particularly working with pat mccorkle our casting director mm -hmm. we we the women that we selected, even not only the four ladies, but Vanessa, Judy Gold, Joellen Pellman, they all wanted to be a part of this because it is women-led and because it is a female story. Uh, and it was important to us to not only have females on screen in our leads, but also behind the camera. So not only are our writers, director, us, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all women, but our line, you know, a lot of our behind, below the line yeah, team, yeah. We're primarily female. In fact, most of our leaders were female. Um, and we're really proud because out of the 250 people we hired for this, over 189 were diverse. We're either women or people of color or, you know, LGBTQ, all of that. So yep. we're really proud of that. And we did push for that. That was important to us. Well, and it, we wanted that to, you know, it all the below the line informs the story in ways that are just not tangible, but they're there. So we wanted everyone to feel as though it was a welcoming experience and 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 that you would you would um, feel at home doing the work and being with the cast so i mean it was a lot of hard work and sometimes people got annoyed at each other but but just the there was a family in its way so yes it was important when that to comes you. to life on screen you see that 
Exactly. You saw how well the cast got along with each other and the chemistry, no matter who was on screen to each other. So kudos to you ladies for, as I said earlier, sticking on to this project and allowing it to come to life.